Okay, now we're going to move on to our testimonies. This is the primary reason why we're here tonight. The giving and sharing of testimonies of healing. For those that are on the teleconference, when you're ready to give your testimony, please press star one. And another thing, make sure it's quiet where you are or else we'll hear everything. Listen for the acknowledgement message that says that your hand is raised. And when we're ready here, we'll call on you. And now, the meeting is now open for sharing of testimonies of healing through Christian science. Thank you for those, uh, those that gave the readings. They were stirring and very, and, and, and very inspiring. Uh, I love this church. I always get inspired here. And, and I, uh, I also love it because I'm a parent. And when I was growing up, I didn't always get every answer I to every question. But it, I, I've been feeling more and more as a parent that if my son asks me something, the answer is usually one of two things. This is the wise thing to do right now, or this is the loving thing to do right now. And as I was growing up, I wish I had Christian science because it usually leads me to at least to direct him toward something that's wise or something that's loving. He's a very, I think, sweet fellow as a result. I just want to give gratitude to have a standard like that. Too. Thank you. Janet. Janet from Georgia, go ahead. Hello. Thank you so much for the readings tonight. They were absolutely beautiful. Several weeks ago, I received a call from my sister. She was quite upset because a pet that her daughter has was very ill. They had um, taken it to the vet because it had some bodily function problems, and they were so worried about it that they felt it was the right thing to do. They are not Christian scientists, but they took her to the vet, and the, the prognosis was horrible. It was not what they expected, and so they couldn't accept it and decided, well, we'll take, him, take her to another vet, and the prognosis was the same. And my sister was very upset because she has three young grandchildren, three, five, and seven, and she felt this was going to be so devastating to the family if they lost this loving pet. So we talked about God's power and his love for every creature. The next morning, I, um, I started praying, and like I always do, I came to my computer and turned on the Plainfield website, and there are so many wonderful articles and citations from Science and Health in the Bible that each morning for this week I texted her these wonderful article um, excerpts and things from the Bible and Science and Health. And Wednesday she texted me back and she said there was some improvement, but that there was still concern. So I used the Google search that is now available to us on the Plainfield website, and I put in love. And this very short article came up from uh, John Randall Dunn. The last, uh, second to the last paragraph says this. this. This really was something I held on to. We have divine authority to turn on any suggestion of error with the sharp rebuke no, you don't. I was so grateful for that. I shared that with my sister. And on Saturday, she texted me and said that she had just received a phone call from her, her daughter who was crying and laughing at the same time because this little loving doggies, bodily uh, functions, returned to normal. And I also was grateful that I could turn to a, this... Um, him on page 23 of our text, our hymnal. Uh, a speaker last week brought this out, and it just helped me so much. It said, Thou gentle beam of living love and deathless life, truth infinite, 
so far above all mortal strife. This past Saturday, my sister called me and said, you know, they had a gathering at her house, and the grandchildren and children were there, and little Lucy, their pet, also came along, and she was running around the yard, picking up sticks, throwing them in the air, and acting like a puppy. I am so grateful for proof of God's love, and it never, ever fails. I'm grateful for all that's being done in Plainfield, and thank you so much. Thank you. I was thinking recently <clears throat> about the many ways in which God has wonderfully cared for this church. And as I was thinking about him and being grateful for him, I had to start writing them down. There were so many. And the first one was when we first became independent, when we were forced to become independent, God provided one of the best lawyers in New Jersey to defend what we were, a huge lawsuit we were hit with. And this was right in our own neighborhood. We found this fine lawyer, fine Jewish man who really appreciated the cause of Christian science and its importance and did an incredible job of defending the cause of Christian science in court and made it free, made it available for every church to be free and independent and still call themselves Christian scientists. Well, from there it just got better when we needed a printer to print our own lessons and our own magazine. Well, God brought us a professional printer from New York City who moved here, became a member, and has been a faithful member ever since. When we needed an electrician to wire the church, and to set up an audio system, well, he provided us with a master electrical engineer who did an incredible job. When we needed a new organist, well, God raised up someone right from our own Sunday school who has served us faithfully for many years. And when we needed a temporary replacement for him, well, God provided us immediately with a replacement who served us well for just the right amount of time. And when we needed someone to move and upgrade our audio equipment, he sent someone with the skills to do a great job. When we needed someone to take over the management of our website, well, that's someone had the skills and the desire to do so. I could go on. This is just a small fraction of the many things that God has done to care for this church. And the interesting thing is, he brought people to this church just when they were needed. He always has, and I'm confident that as we are faithful to him, he always will. I'm grateful to see lives changed and healed in this church, including my own. I don't know where I would be without this church and the Christian science that is practiced here. And I want to thank our readers tonight for doing such a fine job. Thank you. <clears throat> Luann from New York, go ahead. Over the past few months, I've been going through the process of retirement. After many failed attempts to complete the necessary paperwork to secure the provisions of my retirement, I found myself so deep in a problem I had created myself I could not see my way out of it. I began thinking, what am I doing wrong? I got to the point where I had, to re where I had resolved to give up. I thought, God is all power, let him handle it. I was not in a very good place at all. My practitioner assured me that this was rightfully mine and a provision of God to maintain his idea of man. I had not even started this process by arguing on the side of truth. Instead of cladding my thoughts with the armor of good, I opened them right up to the attack of error. I 
started thinking nothing ever goes right for me. Maybe I'm not meant to have the provisions that other people have been afforded and found myself right at the point of proving it. I'd forgotten the Bible study about Joshua and how he had to fight for the promised land. He not only fought with the truth in hand, but he took action. He didn't sit back and say God is all and then expect everything to turn out as he hoped it would. In the article on the website called Opportunity by Bicknell Young, he states, Man is God acting. So think of it as God acting, not as God helping man. Too easy is it for me to think that error is bigger than me and want to pass it off to someone else to handle. It has taken me some time to see that God is my power, my wisdom, my courage and strength to prevail. I started making some phone calls and after a few hours of sorting it all out, things started going in the right direction. I'm so grateful for everything I'm learning and for happily being able to rename this trial Opportunity. I'm grateful to my practitioner for her persistence and for teaching me to not give up the fight and soldier on. I'm grateful for God's mercies and his provisions. Thank you. Thank you. Fairly from Maryland, go ahead. Thank you. In the reading tonight, St. Paul is teaching in Corinth, answering the people's questions about death, the body, and immortality. Jesus was, of course, the master teacher throughout his ministry, expanding and explaining the commandments for a right life in God. And teaching is so central to Plainfield in its Christian message and ministry. I want to express my deepest gratitude for this. When I first walked into a Christian science church, I was in my midlife having grown up in the Episcopal Church, but rarely attending church after leaving home in my late teens. After my marriage, I found Christian science when I really needed it, trying to raise our son in a city where we had no family, no support system, though we did attend an Episcopal Church, but it was not helping. When I first read Science and Health, I recognized that it is the truth. However, when trying to practice it and going through what is called class instruction for 10 straight days, the practitioner teacher refused to answer even one question when I asked one. The class notes from those 10 days were supposed to be sacred, our, our Bible, I suppose, but I never used them because they didn't enable me to practice science. And I had no idea that early workers who had known and worked with Mrs. Eddy had written books to help us understand Christian science. Plainfield made, Plainfield made them available to me for the first time. At last, some 30 years later, I found my real entry into science through the open door of Plainfield. Our practitioners' constant help and the articles they write and the intensive teaching every week in the Bible studies and roundtable. Thank you, everyone at Plainfield, for your generous and wonderful support and teaching. Thank you. Day Day from Maryland, go ahead. Thank you. Peter B. Ross's article, Harsh Noises of the Day emphasizes the fact that everyone can do something to steady apparently troublesome times by insisting that the Lord God omnipotent reign. I used to often be intimidated by threatening situations and suggestions that I was faced with daily, and now I'm understanding the power of God more and understanding that it is the only power as I'm seeing its operation in every area of my life. Now, when I'm faced with threats of any kind, no matter how aggressive, whether related to finances, health, personal relationships, professional matters, or any evil that seems to be affecting the world, rather than sitting by, overcome with fear, or trying to hide while waiting for a situation to pass with time, I'm taking advantage of opportunities to stand while insisting 
that the Lord God omnipotent reigns with the unwavering expectation of good. This is not always easy, and I am so thankful to God for this church, our lessons, articles, services, practitioners, watches, and everything else that is helping to make Christian science more real to me. And I'm thankful to everyone for tonight's meeting. Thank you. The Moors from Georgia, go ahead. Hi, thank you. This is Tony. Um, I'm really grateful for those readings tonight. I remember many, many times I have thought about the demonstration that Jesus made, his resurrection and all that he taught, and it's just a, it gives me a great sense of, of uh, hope. We know we move on from hope into faith into understanding, but it is a, it's a wonderful um, uh, foundation you know, for, for all of us, what he has done, and I, that's what I really love in those readings. Um, I wanted to testify to uh, a wonderful change I have seen in a friend of mine. He's not a Christian scientist, but he has learned so much of the principles and truths of God through his um, faith in God and the Bible, and I just wanted to share it, share it with everyone because it's it's meant so much to me, and I know it's meant a lot to him. But I've learned in this, and I've learned in this church that when someone comes into your life, you have a responsibility to see them as God sees them. And being a member in Plainfield, I now understand much more clearly how to do that and not be mesmerized, not be tricked into accepting the lie. And this was a man who, when he came to me, was basically poor, basically broke, but he was a general contractor. And um, my wife and I, we saw fit to give him as much work as we possibly could around our home to do for us and things that needed to be done. And in beginning to get to know him and talk to him, he had an incredible faith. Um, And as he had virtually nothing to rely on except God, I really became drawn to him because of his faith, and I think he saw that in me as well. And in time, I shared um, science and health with him, and he's read much of it, and we've talked a lot about Mary Baker Eddy. But I just want to say in short that it has been its so inspiring to see a man put his faith and confidence in God, and for me never to accept the... um, the aggressive lies that were confronting this man. Um, His wife was put into hospice. They had all written her off, and he had science and health. He had um, contacted me several times for for prayer, and um, his faithfulness, uh, she has left hospice, and she, um, she is well, well, well on her way beyond recovery now. And, um, He's also experienced some periods of just financial desperation as well. And I've seen those work out for him. And I just wanted to testify that, you know, this law, this principle of God is operating outside of all of us, independent of, um, as we say, personal sense. Um, God is loving all of us, regardless of what religion we put on, what uh, what our education, whatever our financial situation is, none of that matters. And he um, was adhering so closely to these things I've been learning, he didn't even have words for them, and he was doing it. And I saw these things happen in his life, and it's been so inspiring. I just wanted to share it, and um, I hope one day that uh, we'll hear him speak here. And uh, Bruce, if you're listening, I'm very grateful for you. Thank you. I'm grateful for our Bible studies and our roundtables. Recently, a practitioner said, keep working and praying until you get the blessing. And it reminded me of uh, several years ago, I needed a job, and uh, through practitioner help, 
I was given a position in a nearby company. But the boss seemed very um, aggressive, um, mean. <laughs> it, he was, it was hard to see him as a child of God. But I got help from practitioner constantly. And after several months, I was ready to give up. And the practitioner said, God provided you this job. You work for God. And um, I have lessons to learn, I realize now. Well, through the prayers of the practitioner, it's been uh, three and a half years, and I'm in the company, and things have turned around completely. Uh, my boss came running in yesterday, and she said, you got a compliment. I said, from who? And she said, the owner. And I almost fell off the chair. <laughs> but <laughs> he thanked, she said he told her what a great job I did on a project recently. And I just want to say, it's from the teaching that I'm receiving here, the practitioner help, and the encouragement. Um, God is good. He answers all our prayers, and we cannot give up. We just have to do our part. I am so grateful for this church, for our Bible studies, roundtables, our services, all our members everywhere, and I'm grateful to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Shardell from Pennsylvania, go ahead. Good evening. First of all, I'd like to say thank you for this amazing reading. I would like to express my gratitude for all of Plainfield and tonight especially for the Saturday Bible study. For many years, I searched for and tried various Bible studies to no avail. When I came to Plainfield Church, I realized my search was over. Because of these Bible classes, I now have a much deeper and stronger spiritual understanding of the Bible and an expanded love for God and man. Thank you so much for everything at Plainfield. It's wonderful. Good night. Good night and thank you. Anita. Anita from Oregon, go ahead. Yes, thank you. I just wanted to express my appreciation for the uh, full text lesson sermon booklet that makes it so much easier to read the lesson and easy to go back for things that I want to uh, have to reread to, to get the good out of it. And uh, I especially appreciate also the Saturday uh, Bible studies and the round tables on Sunday, the discussions. Uh, make the lesson so clear, and it's opening, it is opening up the Bible to me, something that I have never had before in the past. I would read the Bible, and it was nothing but a bunch of words, but they're making sense to me now. I'm getting some good out of them. Thank you all so much for the work you're doing. I just love this church. It's a wonderful place. Thank you so much. Thank you. The Moors from Georgia, go ahead. Hey, this is Lenny. I um, wanted to express my gratitude tonight. I was, um, I was thinking about the word transform, and it's kind of come up tonight a little bit in our testimonies. And you know, When I first came to this church a few years ago, one of the things that were taught here is how you know, real Christian science isn't about quick fix healings and you know popping God off the shelf and using him to make everything all better and then putting them away again until the next time we need them comes up. But it's about this transformation of our, of our lives, of our hearts. And I looked up the word transform just because I was thinking about it so much, and it says, make a thorough or dramatic change in the form, appearance, or character. Um, especially that last word, character, I think is the most relevant, because that's I realize that's what is going on here, and it is something I'm remarkably grateful for. I was thinking today um, how my character is 
you know, slowly but surely being transformed here through what I'm learning. Um, we had something come up at work recently where I was in a position where I needed to give some difficult but necessary feedback to somebody at work. And um, <laughs> I realized in looking back that I'm, I'm sort of the go-to person at work now for getting things done that need to be done or saying things that need to be said in order to clear the air and pave the way for progress. Um, it seems like people do turn to me for that now. And I had to laugh because a few years ago, that is not who I was. I was not the person that could have the difficult conversation. I was not the person that could easily give um, difficult feedback or stand up when, you know, when things needed to be stood up for. And now I just feel like I'm in those situations a lot. But I had a coworker come up to me recently um, after I had the, this particular conversation with another coworker, and he said, you know, I'm really glad that you did that because I feel like we're already on the way to, you know, making things better at work, making it a better environment. And, you know, he thanked me for, for doing what I do and told me how I earned my keep that day. I had to chuckle because I just, I, you know, I, I owe it to what I'm learning here at this church about standing with principle. And when you feel something and you feel like principle is being trampled on, whether it's at work, whether it's in a family situation, it doesn't matter, um, you know, you're required to stand up and you're required to, you know, take the steps, whatever is necessary. And I'm grateful for that transformation in me that allows me to do what I need to do, um, whether it is at work or or with any aspect of my life, it's um, it's a it's a really neat thing, and I'm I'm very grateful for that. And I couldn't have done it without coming to Plainfield and getting the help of the practitioners here, and just uh, you know the daily work that we do. And I also wanted to uh, thank the ladies tonight for the readings. They were just wonderful. Again, um, it, what a neat church we have that we can we can all participate and grow like that. I just think this is. Pretty cool. So thanks to all of you tonight. Appreciate you all. Thank you. Florence. Florence from Georgia, go ahead. Thank you. Tonight I'd like to give gratitude for a special section in, in our book, in our textbook, Science and Health, which is used often but really recently struck me. It's divine love always has met and always will meet every human need. It is not well to imagine that Jesus demonstrated the divine power to heal only for a select number or for a limited period of time, since to all mankind and in every hour, divine love supplies all good. The second part, I don't say often, but recently reading it over, the words in every hour struck me, and it brought a healing that I had a few years ago to mind, to even help me more appreciate what Christian science has given. At this in this particular time, I was taking care of someone not well, and at the time we were having 24-hour shifts. I had worked all night. The person I was taking care of was restless, and it took everything out of me, praying and working. But towards the next day, towards mid-morning, I just felt like I couldn't go on anymore. I was so tired. That was the sense of it anyway. And I just didn't know what I was going to do. I had another probably eight hours more to go. But I turned to God with all my heart, and I prayed that he helped me to carry on. Shortly after that, this person went to sleep so quietly and soundly for four whole hours, which gave me the time to also get the strength that I needed. I can't forget this time because I know how difficult it had become. But it proved to me that no matter what the circumstance, no matter what is going on, as it has been mentioned before in several of these testimonies, God is a God at hand 
It says so in the Bible. He is a God at hand that we can turn to any time for any help. And if we have been faithful, reaching out for his help, yes, he does answer prayer no matter what. I am so grateful for what I've learned in Christian science because I knew these some truths before, but never applied it, never turned away from error the way I've learned to turn away from it now. I am so grateful for everything I've learned in this church. I'm grateful for the readings tonight, the particular selections, and thank God for a group of people working constantly to prove God's laws. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I have a few things to read tonight. Uh, The first from California. Dear friends, I'm very grateful to be a member of the Plainfield Church. Thank you for the many blessings I have received over the years and for the many opportunities to participate and give to others through church activities. Enclosed is my contribution. And then Maryland. I wanted to say how fortunate I feel to be a member of our church. I feel at this time I'm watching history take place within the Christian science movement. Last night I felt like a light bulb turned on in my head as I listened to the wonderful readings and all the heartfelt testimonies of healing and gratitude. They were wonderful. In time I pray independent Christian science churches will rise up over, over all the world. Thank you all for all that you are doing to make this church what it is. Virginia, dear fellow members, the enclosed contribution is sent with deep appreciation for the love and dedication of each member of this independent church, for the honesty, the truth, and the selflessness in putting God first, with love and gratitude. And then Vermont. Greetings, fellow church members. We're so grateful to the Plainfield Church for all the good work going on and for being able to enjoy church services meetings and Bible studies through the internet and teleconference service. Although we usually attend church in the comfort, comfort of our living room, listening to the beautiful organ music and envisioning the church building while tuning in from afar, thanks to the excellent audio quality, it really seems pretty close to actually sitting in the Plainfield Church pews. That said, I can't wait to visit Plainfield again in person. The resources on our church website are simply awesome, and there's always much to discover, benefit from, and share with others. We are blessed to have so many members, near and far, contributing to keeping the website and services fresh and alive. Our website is truly an interactive environment and available to the entire world community for free. Of course, there is so much that goes into it, so please accept the enclosed check in support of these of these vital outreach activities. Last but not least, thank you for the clear, strong teaching going on in Plainfield. It was only by coming here that I realized what I had been missing from my Sunday school and class instruction, the importance of obedience, and having a backbone and walking the walk, not just talking the talk. Thank you for all this church is doing to uphold Mary Baker Eddy's pure Christian science and thereby blessing the world with love. In the lesson this week, it says in Galatians, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. I was thinking about in my own experience how sometimes if something didn't yield right away, if I was working through a, a physical problem or perhaps financial, it could be easy to become weary. Uh, but here we are taught to keep, keep working to keep our love, our our gratitude high, sing the hymns, say the prayers, and as we do that, our burden is lifted. And as we heard so many in so many testimonies tonight, the healing does come. And it's not just the healing of the pocketbook or the physical healing, 
It is truly a transformation of a life. This has brought such great meaning to my life, being a member here, the activities, to be here tonight to hear the wonderful readings and the testimonies. I'm so grateful for it all. Thank you.